Alright, this video is the last component of our experimental designs lecture. And make sure you just cover the material, it'll help you, and for those of you who are going on to statistics, this information will be very helpful. Now most of the prior examples I have described have been single var classic single variable designs. That means that the researcher manipulates a single independent variable to determine the effects of that one independent variable on, t on a single dependent variable. However, in the real world, most researchers are interested in more complex problems that involve how multiple independent variables interact simultaneously. And that's what allows us to do something called a factorial design. In a factorial design, a researcher is manipulating or comparing differences across two or more independent variables. They may be either true experimental or quasi-experimental designs, and they may use independent variables that are either independent groups, repeated measures, or some combination of both. Those are called mixed factorial designs, when you have both independent groups and a repeated measures variable. So let's take a look at an example. The researcher wishes to examine whether gender and location of seats affects an individual satisfaction at the ballpark. So here we have two independent variables. We have an independent group's variable in gender, males or females. We're also going to have a seat location where we're going to have box seats and we're going to compare them to people in the bleachers. Now we're going to look at the, how those two things interact to affect the uh, satisfaction of the ticket holder's experience. So why is this a factorial design? Because we have two independent variables, gender and seat type. Why is it independent groups? Because you can only be in one of the four groups. As you can see in this image down on the right, you can only be a male in the bleacher seats. You can't also be a male in the box seats. You're going to be one or the other. You can't be, or you can't also be a female in the bleacher seats or a female in the box seats. So there are four possible groups and no repetition is possible. Since we can't or since we can't uh, randomly determine who's going to be male or females, or for that matter, who can afford box seats or bleacher seats, this is going to be a quasi-experimental study. So we're going to look at a number of hypotheses here. For, we have our regular typical hypo or null hypotheses that we would have examined generally. No significant mean difference will exist between male and female fans with regard to their satisfaction and no significant mean difference will exist between fans sitting in bleacher seats or fans sitting in box seats with regard to their satisfaction with their experience at the ballpark. However, we're going to have an additional hypothesis that says no significant interaction will exist between gender and seat type with regard to the level of satisfaction. And what this last hypothesis is basically saying is that satisfaction between males and females is not also dependent on whether or not they're in bleachers or box seats. So it's trying to determine if fact or if uh, if we name excuse me if we name gender factor A and seat location B factor B. Basically, we're trying to make sure that our dependent variable is not some combination of A times B. So if you see this visual. We would, what we would do is we would put the means for each person's scores, their satisfaction for male bleachers and, or males in the bleachers and males in the boxes, um, satisfaction for females in the bleachers and females in the box seats would all go in here. And when you sum up the total mean for males and you sum up the total mean for females, what you're doing is you're testing that main effect hypothesis for gender. Over here, if you sum or average the um, mean for those who are sitting in the bleacher seats ignoring their gender and you sum up the average of those sitting in the box seats ignoring their gender then you have the main effect for seat location you're testing that second hypothesis who has greater satisfaction bleacher seats or box seats the last possible option to get to the interaction hypothesis, you look at the four possible means inside and you compare those four means. We're going to look at some graphs that will help get a good visual of that. So the interaction is probably one of the most interesting parts of a factorial design is most often the focus of the statistical analysis. While the main effect hypotheses give us some information, usually the interaction, testing the interaction hypothesis is the most important thing. Graphically, interactions can be seen when they're examined on an interaction chart. 
what this is is a line graph that plots all the cell means. A graph is not a statistical significance test. Instead, a researcher would have to perform a factorial ANOVA to actually determine if there's statistical significance, but you can still gain a decent amount of information from a graph. So the factorial ANOVA is one of the highest statistics we cover when it takes or in Research 620. There are a couple of different types of potential interactions. One is called a disordinal interaction. It's called a disordinal interaction because the lines are crossing within the, or within the area of the graph. So what we're saying is a different expectation is expected for um, satisfaction of those in the bleacher seats between males than for females. So you can see for females, or excuse me, for those in the box seats, satisfaction doesn't go that much up. It goes from about a 6 to an 8, but it's lower for males, higher for females. But we can see the opposite outcome um, when we look at the bleacher seats. Males have a higher satisfaction um, than females. So that we have, or we do see that satisfaction at the ballpark of males and females is dependent on what type of seat they sit in. Another possible outcome is that they don't interact at all, that satisfaction for, for males and females is not dependent on what type of seat they have. So here we can see that males or males who sit in the box seats have the same satisfaction as females who sit in the box seats. Males who sit in the bleacher seats have the same amount of satisfaction as females who sit in the ble bleacher seats. So factor A is not dependent on factor B. If we see parallel lines, like we see in this image, then chances are there's going to be no interaction, therefore we would accept the null hypothesis for our interaction hypothesis. So a researcher can also look at the interaction from the other direction. In this analysis, the researcher is comparing males and females at each type of seat. For most designs, it doesn't matter uh, which direction you look or make the comparison. It's more about how the research question is asked. And usually the outcome is going to be the same, but every once in a while you're going to see that a different outcome occurs. So notice here, this is the visual we saw already, where we had bleachers on our x-axis and we had gender as what was being visualized here. Now, or seat type, excuse me, was on the x-axis. Now you see a slight difference in the drawing when we have gender on the x-axis and the lines are separated by the seat type. But in both cases, we have a disordinal interaction where they interact in, or where they intersect in the graph. But we can see, while the means are exactly the same, we just might interpret it differently. Where for bleacher seats, males have higher satisfaction than females, where for box seats, females have higher satisfaction for, uh, than males. Over here, what we would say is for or males enjoy bleachers more than box seats, where females enjoy box seats better than bleacher seats. The outcome's the same, the interpretation's the same. Most cases, that's how it works when you look at it from both ways. Every once in a while, it does reveal some information you may have missed. What happens by being able to add independent variables is almost an infinite number of different factorial designs exist, and they're based on three different factors. The number of independent variables, the number of levels of that independent variable, so it can be two, three, four, five. We happen to be looking at a two by two. Um, gender has two levels and box, uh, box and bleachers have two levels, but we could have looked at a two by three and had gender by um, seats where it was box, bleachers, and grandstands. Um, or if you're at Fenway, box, bleachers, grandstands, and the green monster, so four different types of seats. So that would be a two by two, or excuse me, two by four factorial. And then the type of independent variable. You can have a mix of independent groups, repeated measures, or you can have all repeated measures, all independent groups. Let's take a look at a more complicated example. Here's a 2 by 2 by 3 where we have gender as one independent variable, teaching method as a second independent variable where it has two different types of um, teaching the courses, and then teach an occasion where we have a repeated measures variable where we look to see how students are 
do do on a knowledge of research test at the beginning, mid, and end of the semester. And our dependent variable is that knowledge of research. So here we would have multiple interaction hypotheses. We want to look first at our main effects, one for gender, one for teaching method, one for teaching occasion. We also could look at a couple of different interactions. So what we could do is we could see if we gender is factor A, teaching method is factor B, and testing occasion is factor C, we can look at the A by B interaction, the A by C interaction, and the B by C interaction. Those are all called first order interactions. And then we could look at the A by B by C interaction to get the second order interaction. And this is the list out just visually of all the potential hypotheses tested in that last example. Those main effects and then over here we have the three possible interactions. So I hope this gives you some more insight into where designs can go in terms of complexity and maybe helps you understand your articles a little bit better. Alright, have a good one.